Greetings YouTube and welcome back to another vlog and yeah I know it's been two weeks since I last done the video but for whatever reason I just lost a little bit of my motivation I don't know how and why some weeks I feel like yeah I'm going to do everything I'm in a good mood and then others for whatever reason you're just not feeling that same level of excitement that you perhaps once did but I'm feeling a bit more confident this time round, and uh, yeah, I've got I've got pickups, ranting as usual. You know you like your ranting, and I don't know anything that comes to the top of my head, because sometimes uh, just expect the unexpected, and uh, you never know what you're gonna get with this vlog, as you do with any others of mine. So yeah. What what shall we talk about to begin with? Oh yeah, I know what I'm going to talk about. And uh, it's happening to a lot of people. It's like as if when you type in a comment or post a comment on YouTube, it's as if that it's as if you've been shadow banned. And it's like as if you put in a comment, you post it, but for whatever reason your comment doesn't show up or it doesn't show up in someone else's video. It doesn't matter if you go to top comment or new comment. It's like as if it's there. So it means that your comment will probably go to either the spam or uh, I don't know where. Uh, well, well, yeah, probably, probably just the spam. And there's many times where I've posted a comment on YouTube on a YouTube video on anyone's video, and uh, they don't get the comments, even though I have posted it. So yeah. And this happened to me yesterday. I mean, I mean, this is the first time it's happened to me yesterday in quite a while, but it has happened to me quite a lot in the past. So yesterday, uh, I posted a, a comment on the Dell's video, and I've asked him a bunch of questions. Unfortunately, they didn't show up when I went back to watch the video again because, uh, because I was busy. I had to watch the video in several parts. Uh, yeah. He does some really good vlogs in there. I highly recommend you watch his channel. In fact, I might even leave a link in the description so you can check out his channel. Yeah, he's a top bloke. He really is. But yeah, I, I posted a comment and uh, it just didn't show up. I know where... Uh, I, I have, because I don't use Discord, I know he, he advised me to uh, post a comment there. But because I don't use Discord, in fact, I don't really use social media much outside of YouTube because I'm far too busy. And even if I had more time on my hands, I would rather I would rather not spend my time just being on social media. I prefer going out. So what I will so what I will do is is the comment that I posted in this video, despite not showing up, um, I will talk about what I said here so Dell if you're watching hopefully you don't mind yeah you can write down a couple of notes uh what I've said in this video because what I what I'm going to say here was what I originally posted in your video so anyway um I know I, I was I was talking about I know we were, you were talking about uh phobias if I'm not mistaken yeah but yeah I know I have quite a few phobias. I mean, I'm. I mean, I want. I don't know. It's hard to say if I do have an arachnophobia from scared of spiders. I mean, I don't mind little small spiders about that size, but anything that's that size or bigger, no, just no, thank you. But probably the biggest one that I have, or one of the biggest I have, is being claustrophobic. So. Yeah, I don't like being in enclosed areas, you know. Yeah, especially when it's filled with quite a few people. I mean, it, it's not fun sometimes when you go to, like, a supermarket. Sometimes you have, like, an, an aisle that's really narrow and then it gets, like, really, really crammed with people. And especially, like, the ones where, I don't try to think of a certain aisle, like, uh, the ones where all your, your, like, your tins, like, your soups, beans, you name it. I, I don't like that. And uh, that reminds me, um, yeah, there's just one YouTube channel who I highly recommend you watch uh, called Walk With Me Tim. I know where 
he stays at all kinds of hotels and uh, one of them he stays at is uh, the Grand Hotel in Scarborough. Yeah, that hotel's a bit of a shithole. But, yeah, he plugged himself into a hotel room that was, it was in the basement or like, uh, like the like the ground level sort of thing. Um, he plugged himself a room which, uh, bear in mind, yeah, the, the room he booked was, was quite cramped to say the least. And uh, yeah, I had a look at the room. Yeah, it made me feel extremely uncomfortable. I don't know, I just wanted to... I don't know, it sent me into a little bit of a tizzy. But the thing that sent me into a tizzy the most, because uh, I don't know, it was a real, a real irk, is the room had no window. I mean... I mean, it's bad enough being in a, an enclosed spot. Especially if you're like a small room like what I was saying. But to have no window in that, no, no, just just get just get me out of here. Probably end up getting into a massive panic attack. I mean, I I cannot, no, I I cannot, I cannot see myself sleeping in a hotel bedroom where the window where there's no window. No, it has you have to have a window. Yeah, so you can breathe. Yes, I get that the room is air vented. But no, you'd rather have a window. And imagine, I know this sounds uh, horrible. I mean, imagine if imagine if you, you let one off in the middle of the night. And uh, unfortunately, you, you try and get rid of the smell and you can't. So, that would be bad. Unfortunately, um, yeah. I mean, God, 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 God forbid if you do a Dutch oven. No. God forbid that. So yeah, I was talking about claustrophobia and all that lot. And then I was talking to him. I was I mentioned that I was I enjoyed the, uh, I posted I enjoyed the, uh, the the pinball event I went to called the Pin Fest, which uh, it was in the Daventry, which is uh, the Midlands sort of area. So yeah, he went with Jambon, and uh, you know what? Even though even though I suck at pinball, I always have done. I always like watching. I always like watching people show off their pinball skills. I'm like, you know what? I know you're better than me, Dale. You gotta gotta be honest with you, you're better than me. But yeah, I know. Um, it reminds me of seeing all them pinball machines. Like it reminds me of. Uh, the ones I used to see in the arcades when I used to go to real in Wales. And it, there was one particular pinball uh, machine that sticks out in my mind. Yeah, I can still see it very vividly. I can hear, I can still hear the sounds and everything in my brain. And that uh, arcade, the uh, arcade machine, sorry. Uh, the pinball machine that I can remember the most. And I'm sure everyone knows this pinball machine, if not. Where the hell have you been? What rock are you living under? But yeah, this uh, pinball machine was uh, the Adams Family one. Yeah. And uh, I think that pinball machine, I think it came out around the same time or just after the 1991 movie. And uh, I vaguely remember, I think there was, there was a Terminator 2 Judgment Day one. But I can... I can I can vividly hear and see the sounds of the Adams Family pinball machine. Yeah, I mean it, it's sad to it's sad that a lot of the arcades, that all of the arcades in real are gone. They've been they've been demolished and the and you know the build stuff that they're trying to like update real, which yeah it's it's a bit of a dump. Let's put it that way. But they're they're trying to like um, modernize it, but I don't know. It's like trying. It or at the end of the day, it, it's a turd. It's like as if they're trying to polish a turd. You know, that's what it is. It's a polished turd, still a turd, but anyway, that's that. So yeah, I also posted uh, some uh, comments. Well, not comments. Uh, some questions for him to ask. So, uh, so Dell, if you got a piece of paper ready, well, or or your notepad, because I know you write stuff down anyway. So, uh, 
Yeah, so the questions that I asked you were, there were, there were three questions in particular that I uh, wrote down. Uh, so, yeah, the, the first question that I want to ask is, uh, what album do you, cons what, what, uh, an album can speak today, god damn it. Um, what critically acclaimed album do you think is extremely overrated and uh, unfortunately, no matter how many times you try getting into it, it just didn't grip you. However, at the same time, you respect its success and uh, you can get why it is well loved. So, uh, so pretty much all I'm saying is that uh, which album, do you, which critically acclaimed album do you think is overrated and why? But you can see why it's so respected. So that's that. Um, question number two is uh, who who was your first celebrity crush or who were your first celebrity crushes? So uh, it it can be it can be anyone. It can be anyone. I don't I don't know. It could be anyone from like Sigourney Weaver to Nora Batty, if you know what I mean. But I, I'm 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 only kidding. But you know, so yeah, that's my second question. Who's just who was your first celebrity crush or first celebrity crushes? And the third and final question is, uh, I know Main Meister's answer, Main Meister's answer to this, and I'm sure you do, and I think you know which game he'll prefer. But I want to ask you. Which of these two Commodore 64 games do you prefer? Way of the Exploding Fist or International Karate? And it's as, it's as simple as that. But yeah, I, I prefer International Karate, but I do like Way of the Exploding Fist personally. So hopefully you've got those answers written down and uh, I hope you don't mind if you answer them in your... your uh, you vlog on you blog on Sunday, and uh, we shall we shall see how that goes. I mean, I don't understand why YouTube is like hiding comments from people, even though they're anything but offensive. Yeah, and the comment I posted, like, like no links or anything like that. So I I don't I don't get it. I've seen people post like some of the most vilest comments going. And YouTube does nothing about them. Why? Like, what the hell is going on? I have no idea. Yeah, but nowadays we live in a society where we don't want to. We don't want to upset the minority. And seriously, yeah, these people—they're just pretending. I've I've always believed that they pretend to be offended just for attention. You want people to feel sorry for them. Well, you know what? I don't feel sorry for them, sods. So they can uh, they can do one, pretty much. So that's that. So anyway, we're we're there. Moving moving swiftly on because I could I could rant about YouTube problems all day, but I haven't got the time as I would like. So anyway, uh, we now want to the pickups, and uh, the, there are there are ten items here. So we've got two games for the Super Nintendo, four DVDs, and four videos. So we'll get on with the games because because uh, they're in well because they're on they're on top because I've got I put like a a pile. So anyway, so first game for the Super Nintendo, and. Uh, I, I'm absolutely shocked that I do not have this game in my collection. I did at one point, and I regret not having it again until now. So, yeah. So, of course, you cannot have a Super Nintendo without Street Fighter 2. So, yeah, this one is Street Fighter 2, the World Warrior. So, yeah, the first Street Fighter game for the Super Nintendo. And, uh, yeah, if I was the first Street Fighter game for a lot of people. Um... Yeah, I mean, one of the it wasn't the first Street Fighter game that I played, because uh, that would go that would be Street Fighter EX Plus L from the PlayStation One. I mean, it's not the best Street Fighter game, but I do have a lot of fondness for it. But yeah, I've got 
this the the first Street Fighter 2 game for the SNES and the, of course I mean th this is I mean this is almost arcade perfect compared to the original Street Fighter 2 arcade machine so that's that and a fun fact about Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo this version I may add this in the UK in the UK this was the this was and still is the best selling game of all time for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, we're talking about UK sales. So, out of all the games that came up for the Super Nintendo over here, this was the number one best selling game for it. Worldwide sales, it's Super Mario World. But for UK sales, Street Fighter 2 absolutely dominated. And, and the, the SNES was like the first Nintendo console that was quite successful over here the NES didn't do particularly well especially when you had the microcomputers like this the, the, uh, the ZX Spectrum Commodore 64 and even when the Amiga had come out but yeah Street Fighter 2 absolutely fantastic yeah people will say that Street Fighter 2 is better than Super Street Fighter 2 because they move a lot faster and uh, I, I get that. I while I do think that they're better games, I I still prefer this. And the thing what I like about Street Fighter 2 is I mean this this was a game changer and uh, you know uh, it changed fighting games for the better. While it's not my favourite fighting game of all time, that would be Tekken 3 on the PlayStation 1. I wasted so much of my child play child play that wasted so much of my childhood playing that. But yeah, I could I could talk about Street Fighter 2. Yeah, Turbo and Super Street Fighter 2 may be better, but I have more of a soft spot for this particular version of Street Fighter and uh, and for the impact that it had. And uh, I know some people would say that Street Fighter 2 is a little bit overrated. Me, I've got to be honest with you, I think it deserves every bit of praise that it has received. So that's that. So there's the second SNES game. I bought this from the same seller because I thought, you know what, I'll just grab it. I mean, th it, this game isn't anything particularly special, but I don't know. It, it's, just, it's, it's just fun. If you like your simplistic football games, then... Super Soccer will do you just fine. I mean, there are better football games on the snares like Striker, uh, which is really good, and you can create your own teams. And the, they had some good versions of Sensible Soccer, though, to be fair, you'd much rather be playing them on the Amiga. And, uh, I mean, there's a few other ones. I mean, FIFA was pretty good on the Super Nintendo, but they were much better on the Mega Drive, let's be honest with you. The Mega Drive was the best for sports games, but the SNES did have a couple of standout ones. This, this is one of the better football games. Not the best, but it's still a pretty good sports game. I mean, I might look to get a few other more sports titles for the Super Nintendo. Uh, one of them is Super Tennis, which is absolutely superb. Honestly, I know it, it was an early release I think it came out in 91 or 92, that sort of era. I mean, the Super Nintendo came out in Britain in 92. So, that's that. And, uh, anyway, I'll just move my drink. So, I've got a bit more room to show you uh, the DVD. So, I've got four of them. And, uh, yeah. Uh, get well. Instead of just waffling, just fucking show them. Anyway. I mean, I bought the director's cut of this first film very recently from CEX. And guess what? I, I bought the director's cut of its sequel. And uh, if you know my, if you watched the previous vlog or one of them, well, yeah, it was actually in the previous vlog or was it in the one after that? I can't remember. But yeah, but anyway, because I bought, because I bought uh, the director's cut DVD of Alien, I've done the same with its sequel, Aliens, and of course, you you all know that these films are always up for the de debate. Which do you prefer, Alien 
or aliens and uh, I know it, it always has a always has, has a good uh, always leaves a good uh, room for discussion so of course I've got that I mean I, I know where I was in CX I also saw Alien Resurrection Director's Cut now I'll tell you what I do with Alien Resurrection this is my director's cut of it. Just, just get a pair of scissors and fucking cut that piece of shit down. Cause that, I mean, Alien. Yeah, I mean, it, it's no secret I detest Alien Resurrection. But yeah, but we're talking about we're talking about aliens. So, what what do what do I have to say about aliens? I mean, the the. An alien, probably two, two of some of the best sci-fi films ever made. So that's that. And I've got a bit of an itchy nose for whatever reason, but yeah, should be used to that by now. Um, next, uh, we're going to say 1991 for this uh, this film starring Rick Mayall. I mean, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Rick. You know, I I love. I love him in programs like The Young Ones and The Bottom, and ju just in general. But, but yeah, this film has a very special place in my heart. I mean, it's not it's not the greatest of films, but I still enjoy it. So, and that is uh, the film Drop Dead Fred. Yeah, I used to watch this one quite a bit when I was younger. So, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a particularly great film, but. I, I still enjoy it, so that's that. So anyway, um, I'll, I'll I'll read a little. I'll read what it says on the back of it. I mean, because some people probably have never watched this film. I mean, it might not be a cup of tea, but I suggest giving it a watch. If any, if anything, just out of curiosity. So yeah. Yeah, Rick Mayo gives a typical manic bottom style performance in his rip roll funny comedy. This hilarious film also stars BB Cates, yeah, who she was in the Gremlins too. Bridget Fonda and Carrie Fisher, who of course uh, Star Wars, yeah, Princess Layla. Yeah, when Elizabeth, played by uh, Phoebe Cates, returns to her mother's home. When her marriage breaks up, she recreates her imaginary childhood friend, Fred, to escape the trauma of losing her husband and her job. In between the chaos and um, in between the chaos and mayhem that Fred creates, Elizabeth desperately attempts to win back her husband and returns uh, to normality with comical results. I mean, it's not a great film by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know. It, it it's it, it's somewhat amusing. So that's that. Um and now we're we've got a film starring Michael Caine and Julie Walters and it's a and it's a film yeah, the screenplay by Willie Russell and there is of course uh, is Educating Rita. So I, I have not watched this film in quite a long time, if I'm being honest with you. I know Willie Russell did other stuff like uh, Shirley Valentine and uh, a grand uh, our grand day out. Yeah, I mean I remember I remember doing our grand day out. We had to, we had to study that in school. I'm sure I'm sure quite a lot of people did. But anyway, but yeah, in the uh, educating Rita, yeah, Rita, a hairdresser with a sharp wit, is married to Denny. And the 26 doesn't want a baby. She wants to discover herself, so she joins the Open University. Dr. Frank Bryant is a d disillusioned university professor of literature. His marriage has failed. His girlfriend is having an affair with his best friend, and he can't get through the day without dining, downing a bottle of two of whiskey. He refers to himself as an appalling teacher of appalling students. What Frank needs is a challenge. Along comes Rita. In this hilarious and often moving drama, the, the story tells how two people find a new lease of life through each 
Chuba. And yeah, it, it, this is actually, I mean, this is a really good film. I mean, what, what I like about Michael Caine is, um, um, he, he's a very, he's a very versatile, he's very, very versatile. He doesn't, he doesn't just play like, he doesn't just play like, uh, you know, like the spy stuff or, uh, like the usual like, espionage, like what he does or, uh, and all that lot, like, like in films like uh, The Ip Crest File and uh, The Italian Job. But you know what? I mean, this, this is a, this is a really, really good film. I do, I do recommend it if you've not checked it out though. But I mean, I want to try and look for some of the, uh, other, I, I want to look for other stuff by Willie Russell because I mean, I do like it. I mean, Shirley Valentine isn't my cup of tea, but. Yeah, this and uh, I would run there out fantastic. So there we go. And uh, the last DVD is uh, a film starring Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. And uh, I remember as a kid, yeah, this film always used to be on around Christmas time. I have no idea why, but yeah. But I always used to watch it because. Uh, yeah, it's one of my all-time favourite films, with these two anyway. And that is uh, Trading Places from 1983. So, yeah, this this is absolutely fantastic. I I, don't, I just think this film is incredible. Oh, uh, yeah. One of the best comedy films that Eddie Murphy's ever started for. It could possibly be my favourite Eddie Murphy film. It possibly could, though. I will, though, will say uh, Beverly Hills Cop is up there as well. So, yeah. What happens when a Wall Street tycoon meets a street smart hustler? Find out in the comedy classic that helped launch the careers of two Hollywood superstars, Eddie Murphy and Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Uh, from acclaimed director John Landis comes the story of of a down-to-earth con artist who trades lifestyles with a well, well-to-do investor, Dan Aykroyd. Two wealthy power players set the wheels turning with a crazy bet, and from there, the comedy gets richer by the minute. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I can't, I can't say anything about this film. Absolutely fucking brilliant. Um, how many now attempt to give it? Probably a ten, actually. So that's that. So now we're on to the four VHS tapes. So of course, remember I said I was collecting uh, VHS tapes of my favorite kid show, which is Thomas the Tank Engine, and that's exactly what I've done. I mean, so yeah, I've now. So now this is like I've complete. Yeah, what the hell's going on? I I had to be quiet because uh, I I heard some shouting going on outside. You you get it all the time around where I live. Fuck it, I'll just continue with the video. So anyway, I know I bought the first eight episodes of series one last week, and the same with series two. But anyway, well, I know I so I've collected the rest of series one here. So. Uh, so the first tape here is uh, Troublesome Trucks and Other Stories. So this is epi this has episode 9 to 17 of series 1 on here. I, I mean, I mean, you know, the camera's not doing a very good job at focusing. So, so that's that. But, yeah, I know I got the very first, uh, I, I bought the, the 1980s. I had, a, I had a research on this, yeah, the first time the Tank Engine tape, that one, I mean, well, there I could speak properly, the one that had the first eight episodes on the one I bought last week was a 1986 release, I had to have a look, because I mean, I wasn't sure if it was 85 or 86, but yeah, it was an 86 release, but the first series came out in 84, so the one that I bought had the first eight episodes of series one. Yeah, so Troubles and Trucks and Other Stories has episodes 9 to 17 through it. So, uh, 
Yes, yeah, but yeah, some classic episodes. So the first episode is uh, Troublesome Trucks, which is the title episode on this tape. Um, next is, uh, well, the other episodes, I'll just go through. Uh, James and the Express, Thomas and the Guard, Thomas Goes Fishing, Thomas, Thomas Terrence and the Snow, Thomas and Bertie, Tenders and Turntables, Trouble in the Shed, and Percy Runs Away. So, yeah, they're just, just, just classics. They really are. And uh, to complete the rest of Series 1, we have Cole and other stories. So it has the final nine episodes, which are like episodes 18 to 26. And uh, I, I really like the colour of this tape as well. Like, it's like an, an orange, but like a, a gradient effect. So we'll, we'll see what, uh, show what the back looks like. Yeah. So that's good. So it has the episodes Cole in it. Uh, next is the Flying Kipper. Now, this this when I when I was growing up as a kid, this was the episode of Thomas the Tank that I can remember the most because I remember this one was my absolute favorite as a kid. I know. Yeah, this episode felt different compared to the others. I mean, the other episodes were like, uh, I'm going to put it, they were more down to earth slice of life, but I don't know, the Flying Kipper is is quite suspenseful, it left me, uh, it left me on edge as a kid, I mean, even for a kid show, uh, they actually did a good job with Atmosphere, and that's what they did with that episode, absolutely fantastic, and I watched it again on YouTube to see if the episode holds up as well as I remember Yes, it does, and then some. Um, then the fourth, uh, the third episode here is whistles and sneezes, episode twenty. That's what it is. Um, next is Toby and the Stout Gentleman. Then there's Thomas in Trouble, Dirty Objects, Off the Rails, Down the Mine, and Thomas's Christmas Party. Yeah, because they're uh, in the first three series of Thomas. The last episode of each of those series was always a Christmas episode. And uh, I can't be honest with you, the Christmas episodes were usually some of the weakest. So that's that. And uh, the last two tapes, uh, last time I bought the first... I bought the first uh, season two ep Well, I don't know why I'm saying season. Series, because uh, your seasons is an American thing. But yeah, I bought the first eight episodes of uh, series two last week, which was a uh, Thomas Percy and the Cole uh, VHS tape. So I don't, I've done the same with uh, what they were series one because now now that's complete. I've done the same with series two and I've completed that as well now. So that is a uh, yeah. So this one, this is. See, I mean, yeah, I don't think I can speak properly. I didn't have the best sleep last night. But anyway, so this one is Percy and Harold and other stories. So this is episodes 9 to 16 of series 2 on here. Yeah, I know there's a bit of glow. I mean, the, the tape itself, I mean, it has a little bit of wear and tear to it, but it still, it works perfectly. I'm... I try and get them in the best condition that I can. And for, unfortunately, this was probably the best that I could get. But yeah, it is the back of it as well. And uh, yeah, so the episodes on here are Percy and Harold. The Runaway. Percy Takes the Plunge. Pop Goes the Diesel, which uh, is a play on of uh, Pop Goes the Weasel. Yeah. Uh, Next episode is Dirty Work. Then the, the last three episodes have been A Close Shave, Better Late Than Never, and Break Van. So that's that for it. Then. And then the last tape of Series 2 is uh, it has episodes 17 to 26. So 
So this so this one had eight episodes and the other one has ten. I'm surprised he didn't do like like nine episodes on that and nine here, but it is what it is. But I can't claim can't complain too much. And this was one of the very first VHS tapes that I can remember having as a kid. And that is this one though, the deputation and other stories. So yeah, that's episodes uh, 17 to uh, 26. So we'll, we'll have a look at the, the back of that. You have to zoom in a, have to zoom in a bit more because uh, you know, the camera wasn't focusing as well as I would have would have liked. But anyway, so <coughs> excuse me, had a bit of trap wind then. So yeah, so the first episode on this one is the episode that's on the, 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 the name of the table with the deputation. So that's the first episode. Uh, next is Thomas Comes to Breakfast, which is a, a very iconic episode where yeah, Thomas uh, crashes through the station master's house. And uh, yeah, an episode that... I liked that episode as a kid, but it also pissed me off. Because uh, I'm, cause I remember watching it like... I was pissed off. Thomas got blamed for the crash, even though uh, the cleaner who was uh, the cleaner who was cleaning inside Thomas meddled with his controls. And guess what? They they got off score free. Whereas Thomas uh, got absolutely bollocked by the fire control for doing something that was out of his control. I mean, maybe in the but I know in the beginning of the episode he is a bit conceited and boasts to uh, the others that he could go that he could go without his driver. So I can understand that, but what about, yeah, well, the other cleaner who uh, tampered with his controls, and they, yeah, they did get off scot-free, and Thomas gets reprimanded, like, what, like, what the actual fuck, so, that's that, uh, then we're on to the episode Daisy, which is an episode about a, a diesel who acts like a Karen, yeah, so, that's that. Uh, Percy's predicament. Yeah, the diesel. Yeah, wrong road. Edward's exploit. Ghost train. And yeah, this was the first Halloween episode or the first like uh, ghostly episode that they ever did for Thomas the Tank. And you know what? For its time and the effects that they used in it, absolutely fantastic. It. it I mean, younger self was genuinely scared by it, but yeah. It's, it's just one of those. Yeah. Atmosphere for a kid show. Especially during the 80s. I mean, you can't go wrong. And then we have the second to last episode, which is Wooly Bear. Pretty decent episode. Not one of my favourites. And the last episode, you know, Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree, which, I mean, it's probably one of the weaker episodes on this tape, but you know what, all the episodes, uh, most of the episodes, if not all, are pretty damn good for, for what it is. And it just shows you that uh, kids of today will not understand how great kids shows were back in the day. I mean, yeah, there was probably some shit out there back then as well. There's no ifs or buts about it. So, so that's it. So, uh. I've completed series one, two, three, and five. But I'm going to see. But now I'm going to go on to series four. And I'll tell you what. Collecting, collecting the tapes on series four. Or, or ones that have series four episodes. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Even though there was a, a VHS that had the, the complete series four in it. It's extremely rare. And extremely expensive. And I haven't got the money for that. But what looks like I'm going to have to buy. There was like over tapes where they put like series 4 episodes on. But they put them in such a an order. Where the episodes are not in order. And uh, they put them on like other like compilation tapes. I mean there was a few that did have series 4 episodes. And were just series 4 ones. But then they had other series 4 episodes. That were mixed in with compilations of it. Uh, Previous episodes that were like from series one to three to three at that point. I don't know. 
they, they made the right balls up of it, but it, it's a road that I'm going to have to cross because, uh, like I said, the first five series for me was my era, and anything after that was absolute shite. And uh, to be fair, I, I moved away at that point. But honestly, I, it's not. I'm not just going to buy like. I'm not just going to buy like the Thomas tapes. I'm going to look at movies again. But the problem with VHS is it takes up so much room. So I'm going to have to prioritize which, which uh, films I want on uh, video. But other than that, I'm not particularly bothered if it's DVD or a uh, video. But certain things, in my opinion, are better on video because there's certain things that that were on like the DVD releases or Blu-ray releases and they have like stuff that's taken out. I mean, like look what's happened like long to Star Wars, I mean I mean I know in Star Wars they like uh, I mean George Lucas decided to like uh, change some of the effects in it and uh, and uh, it, it pissed a lot of people off because uh, the the films do in the original way were, were fine enough but Lucas decided to tweak about with it and fucked them up so and of course they're collectible because uh, people want to see what the films were like in the original style before he changed it before he changed them it, it, it's frustrating in my opinion leave it leave it as it is if it ain't broke don't fix it i mean i'm personally not the biggest star wars fan but i know that every i know that most people out there are a massive, massive fan of that franchise. Even though uh, in recent times, um, the results have been pretty underwhelming. But, yeah, that's that. So that's that. Oh, yeah, uh, there's, there's one thing I want to show you. In fact, uh, in fact I'll show you on, okay, I'll show you on my phone in a second. I want to show you something. I mean, last week. I mean, I was I was coming back. I was coming back from work, and uh, normally where I am, it takes about um, I'd say about thirty five to forty minutes. It takes about thirty five to forty minutes to get back where I was. But yeah, last week the the, the traffic was absolutely atrocious. Yeah, absolutely atrocious. I mean, yeah, we were coming back in it. it I don't know, it took me, well, no, not, well, because I can't drive out, one, one of my work colleagues uh, picks me up and drops me off, because they don't live too far from me, you see, so, yeah, so we had to, uh, we had to divert home, and here is an absolute nightmare, and yeah, you know the motorway, the M56, yeah, last week, I think it was last Monday, I believe, yeah, there was a car that crashed and caught fire. And uh, yeah, it was in it was in Preston Brook, which is in Runcorn, so that'd be Junction Eleven, I think. So anyway, what what we had to do was because the traffic was that bad on the M fifty six. We I meant we had to drive we had to drive on the A fifty six, which uh, which was in um uh, well, yeah through Hell's yeah Hellsby, Frodham and. Uh, even bits of roll call. So because of how bad the traffic was, we had to we had to drive on the A fifty six. As yeah that road I guess what that road was a nightmare. Not much of a nightmare as it would have been on the M M fifty six. We will probably would have been stuck for another hour. Yeah. But we were in this traffic for I don't know. I mean it took me over two hours just to get home. And uh, at least at least half of that was stuck in Frodham, and that is a picture of what the traffic was like, and, oh sorry, that's what the traffic was like throughout, and to make it even worse, because they fucking had to, there was temporary lights, like, virtually like every five sec, uh, every five minutes, there was about, there was about four or five temporary lights, and, uh, even if you went on, like, some of the back roads, unfortunately, you would end up getting back onto where the A56 was and that's where the temporary light temporary traffic lights are. It was an absolute nightmare, I'll tell you that. 
I mean, I mean, I don't mind them doing like roadworks, but it was like as if they were putting temporary traffic lights out there just for the sake of putting it out there. I mean, it's just, it just absolutely boggles the mind. I mean, I don't mind. Yeah, just having a look at the weather. Apparently, it's seventeen degrees out there. Feels a bit cooler today, I think, even though you were coming to the end of August. But yeah, the the traffic was absolutely stupid. I mean, I mean, it would have been worse on the M fifty six, but like I say, it wasn't much better on the A fifty six. But unfortunately, you're gonna have to catch the traffic at some point. And that was it. But yeah, but what? But once we, but once we got into Roncon, it it was it wasn't too bad. So no. But yeah. But yeah, it reminds me of the time when I was in uh I was in Wales, yeah, we were stuck in traffic for like two hours and well I said I'd probably say it was more than that. Yeah, we got into uh, we got into Flint and then we were like stuck in like temporary traffic lights but well over an hour there. It didn't help that like all the a lot some of the some of the people didn't fancy driving on the A fifty five through well which like the expressway, so some people decided to drive through Flint, and that was an absolute nightmare. And what made it worse was, I was absolutely dying for a piss, and I had to hold this pee in for like about two hours. Mm. Yeah, mm. Mm. yeah. To to describe to describe the pain that I was in holding that pee in, it. Uh, it it was it was it was just as painful as it was watching fucking Twilight. I'll, I'll tell you that. But yeah, we dropped off. I mean, as soon as we got to a McDonald's, we got out of the car and absolutely legged it into Mackey's just for a slash. Well worth it though. I mean, I wasn't bothered about um, I wasn't bothered about a quarter pounder or uh, a Big Mac. I just wanted a piss. And dear me, I don't know. It's just funny. It's funny how you remember things like that. I know stuff stuff that wasn't enjoyable, yet you still remember it. it it's weird though. But uh, it's all it's always the worst things that you can remember, but you you can't help but laugh at it because if you don't laugh, you will cry. And my god will you. Anyway. So that's that. And uh, last but not least, I want to talk about uh, the refereeing in the Liverpool game. And you know what? I know this will, I mean, this, this of course, uh, will cause a debate. But I know some people, some people agree, some people don't. And, uh, yeah, but remember, yeah, I've been Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yeah, I know he was quite rough in that game. And yet, a yellow card for him what was warranted. He was very lucky not to have got a red. Um, but the other one, the other talking about point is uh, Virgil van Dijk going in on that Newcastle player. I can't think what Newcastle player was. But I don't know. I know where Newcastle made it 1-0. It was scored by Anthony Gordon, yeah, the former Evertonian. But yeah, I mean, van Dijk went in on one of the players. I know... From one from one angle, it looked like he did clip the Newcastle player and went took him down. But watch another angle, you can see that you can see the the aggression in Van Dyke's face. And yeah, I've got to be honest with you. I have to, for once, I have to agree with the referee. In this instance, I will admit, even if even if Van Dyke didn't intentionally go into that player, it was still it was still reckless. And some people thought, oh yeah, that was not enough for a red card. I mean, if uh, I mean, surely if uh, I'm trying to think, uh, honestly, I, I I cannot think of another incident, but. I'm sorry. If you go, if if you're a defender going in onto to, into a, if you're a defender going into a striker or a forward in the penalty area, it, it's an instant sending off, whether it, you intend to do it or not. But I don't know what annoyed me with Van Dyke was. Uh, 
I don't know. He he was given he was given the ref and the uh, the Newcastle player in the year full. I mean, he's the captain of Liverpool. She should he should do should do better. Show a bit more authority. And then we thought from there on that was it. The game had gone. Newcastle were going to uh, dominate us, but they didn't. And that surprised me because uh, Newcastle looked like they were going to absolutely thrash us, but they wasted all of their chances and they paid the price big time. When yeah, Nunes came on, scored the equaliser, and then he scored the winner in stoppage time, and we were down to ten men, which was absolutely insane. We played better without Van Dyke when we did with him, so that's one thing. In there, Eddie Howe thought, yeah. He, he felt hard done by the result. And you know what? I I understand how he feels because Newcastle, up until Darwin Nunes, were the far, far, far superior team in every single way. We shouldn't have won that game, but we did. But And hopefully that win should give us a bit of a boost. But with uh, Van Dijk out the way, um, I don't even know how this season is going to pan out. In all honesty, do I mean? Because I mean, there's some tough games coming up as well. But yeah, but yeah, we cannot afford to lose key players because uh, losing losing players at such a bad time. Uh, excuse me. Um, losing players at such a bad time could be costly to our hopes of qualifying for the Champions League. I mean. I won't be surprised if we get Europa League again because, uh, let's be honest with you, the FSG will not invest in the team in the way that they should. And it, and a lot of Liverpool fans like myself are worried that we will not sign anyone again until perhaps the January transfer window. I mean, the deadline day ends on uh, Friday the 1st of September, I think it is anyway. But... But Liverpool need we need some sort of structure if we have any hopes of getting into the top four. When I did my prediction, I said we might get into the top four, but I won't be surprised if some team like Newcastle pips us to it. I got even though they lost, I don't know. They're still looking a really strong team. So that's that really. And uh, do I have anything else to talk about? Um, no, I don't actually. No, I, I thought I had, but I had to read down my notes. So, well, that's all there is to talk about. Sorry if this vlog seems a bit uh, all over the place, a bit of a hodgepodge, but you know me by now. So, anyway, I think I will call this vlog an end right here, and I will see you all next time. So, take care and have a good day.